Today we're talking about Zelda lore. We're gonna answer. We're gonna answer some questions about the Zelda lore. I've done the research. I've been trawling through the wikis. Been looking through other fans' fan theories. Um, looking up stuff about the other games. I had someone who owns Building a Champion. Look up like pages that talked about Calamity Ganon for me for information that I don't have access to myself. I've been rereading Hyrule Historia. I'm not gonna go get it to show you, but it's right there on the floor. Now we're ready to talk and answer the question, the question, the final question, the only question that matters for Zelda lore. How many Ganons are there? A comprehensive guide to Ganon canon. Why do we care about how many Ganons there are? It's very important to Zelda lore just he's the main villain and it's unclear if he's even one character or if he's like 10 different characters that just kind of steal each other's name it's unclear and today we're going to answer the questions get rid of the confusion we're going to understand the coolest villain in video gaming we're going to understand his motivations his abilities whether or not there's a bunch of them or whether there's one of them. How does that make any sense? Let's get into it. There we go. Let's start off with Demise. I gave all of these, I gave them all like Game of Thrones titles, like Daenerys Stormborn, of House Targaryen, uh, Khaleesi of the Great Gassy, the, un the Unburnt Breaker of Chains. I just listed all their canon titles and made up a few, just for fun. Those are all on here. I will usually clarify when something is my headcanon, my theories, and what is actual information. I will separate that for you. I will make it clear. How are we counting? That will become clear. You have to stay tuned. Demise, I will say, I will say right now, Demise is not Ganon himself. I, I don't count Demise himself as a version of Ganon. Demise is a separate demon king whose curse then creates Ganon, uh, and that's down. He curses highly his descendants and future heroes to always be plagued by his rage incarnate, manifests as Ganon. Some interesting stuff about Demise, we don't know, we don't fucking know where he came from. We don't know where he came from, could have been from the depths, could have been from Low Rule, could have been from Twilight. We don't know where he came from. Could have been Low Rule. One of the biggest reasons we think he might be from Low Rule, as it says there, his sword has the inverted Triforce on it. Like you put it next to the Master Sword. This Triforce here, it goes the other way on the Master Sword. So it's like, it's Low Rule's Triforce, you know? He hates the gods, especially, a for, especially Hylia. We don't know why, but he does. And then he curses us when we kill him at the end of the game. And that curse becomes Ganon. That's all that's important here. Again, we should clarify what is canon and what is my theory. He could be intended to be the first incarnation of Ganon. I don't know that he's not. We don't know enough about his origins to say definitively, but for my head canon, for my theory, I'm just going to put forward. I don't count him. Oh, we also don't know. Technically, we don't know if the curse caused Ganon specifically, or all of the series' villains. Um, that is that is a prominent theory I've seen online, that Demise's curse doesn't just create Ganon, it creates Vadi, the Shadow Links, the Majora's Mask, um, which that one specifically I don't think makes any sense, but this video isn't about Majora's Mask lore, so we're not going to get into it. Personally, I'm... Like, that one specifically doesn't make sense. I don't think any... I think just for the sake of the lore, I think it's a boring theory. I think it oversimplifies the lore. Even if... Even if Demise does create all the series villains with his curse, even if that's what's actually happening, this video is just about Ganon. So we're gonna ignore that possibility going forward. This is Ganondorf from Cadence of Hyrule. He's probably not canon. He was born a Gerudo, becomes a pig. We're gonna see that a lot this video. He's good at music, I haven't played this game, but he's probably not canon, so it doesn't matter. Moving on. Ganondorf I, the Demon King, King of the Gerudo, Gloom Summoner, Demon Dragon. 
Uh, this is the first known incarnation of Demise's Raid. That's headcanon. Timeline stuff not confirmed. Uh, he's not the first Gerudo King. We, that is canon. That's discussed in the game. No matter how this fits into the timeline, this Ganondorf is not the first king of the Gerudo. They talk about how there's been a Gerudo king every hundred years. But as far as we know, this is the first one to have that power from Demise. Ganondorf already has the power to control darkness, to summon gloom, and use it to summon monsters, things of the sort. The sacred stone he possesses just enhances that. His motivation, I tried to include motivation on him. We try not to separate the plot, the lore, away from the characters and the themes of the story. If you get, if you lose that aspect of it, you're too in the weeds. That's my philosophy. We do know Kaume and Kotake, who are his mother's in Ocarina of Time, appear to be younger in this game. They appear to be followers of him. This is a little bit theory on my part, but um, they're, Kaume and Kotake are very clearly in those flashbacks, and they are very clearly younger than their Ocarina of Time counterparts. Could also be that they're not... Could be that these aren't the same characters, the same way that Beetle isn't intended to be the same character every time we see him. But that's... I don't... I don't think so. Uh, he never possesses any part of the Triforce. I believe that makes him unique among every incarnation of Ganon. Uh, he uses the Secret Stone... Secret Stone instead. He's a, but even without it, he's a powerful spellcaster, cursed all the weapons in the kingdom. He can summon monsters, created multiple Phantom Ganons, which I think is... He's the only Ganon that does that as well, usually... They'll have, like, one. Wielded clubs, spears, and a sword. Anyways, he's sealed by Raru for thousands of years. Unsealed. Spoilers. Then you kill him uh, during the upheaval, which is much later in the timeline than everything else we're talking about right now. But I don't want to circle back to that, so that's what happens to him eventually. Moving on. This is Dra Ganondorf Dragmire, specifically as he appears in Ocarina of Time. I've broken... This is the Ganon that appears the most, and I'm, I've kind of separated a lot of his distinct appearances, even though really it's all one guy. This is really provably all one guy. Ganondorf Dragmire II, Gerudo King of Thieves, Demon King, Conqueror of Hyrule, Bearer of the Triforce of Power, Son of Twinrova, King of Evil. Kame and Kotake are said to be 400 years old in Ocarina of Time, and they raise this Ganondorf. They are not followers of him. They are his mothers. Uh, his motivation, as talked about in Wind Waker, is he covets the privilege and the nice winds in Hyrule. He's a strategic mastermind. He outsmarts Zelda, even like, even though minutes later the Triforce itself is like, no, she gets the Triforce of Wisdom. She's also a child, so not at her fullest potential. Uh, he's an incredibly powerful sorcerer. Preferring to fight with magic than with blades, which I think makes him unique among the Ganondorfs. Most of them, most of the time you see humanoid Ganondorf, he will pull out his sword. This one does Dead Man's Volley. Uh, he cursed Jabu Jabu and the Deku Tree, who are both magical entities. Banished useless minions to the void between dimensions. That's canon. I don't know what it means, but it sounds badass. We know this guy. He's in Smash. That's where this render comes from. We're going to talk about the timeline where he wins. He never goes by Ganondorf after after ascending and reclaiming the whole Triforce in this timeline. He just goes by Ganon. So we're I'm not even though he's the same guy as Ganondorf the 2nd as I'm calling him or Ganondorf Dragmire. Uh he doesn't go by that, we're, so we're not going to dead name this version of him. He's Ganon. Demon King, Forger of Strength. That's a real title. That's from Link to the Past, I think. And I think it sounds cool. Uh, King of Evil, Hero Slayer. That one I made up. Because it sounds cool. Bearer of the Completed Triforce. Only true in Link to the Past, but we're doing all this as one incarnation of Ganon. Because I'm going to go insane if I have to talk about every pig Ganon as if it's a separate entity. They're not. It's the same guy getting resurrected over and over. 
this is a list of all the times he gets resurrected over and over. He completes the Triforce and rules Hyrule. Sealed into the Dark World by the Sages before Link to the Past. Somehow breaks out. Killed by the Hero of Legend. Resurrected by Twin Rova in the Oracle Games. Killed again by the same hero. Resurrected and merges with Yuga. That's this guy. Look at him. Killed again by the new hero of Hyrule. Resurrected again, reconquers a lot of what's left of Hyrule, and then killed again by the hero of Hyrule. But, as anyone who's gotten a game over in uh, Adventure of Link knows, his followers may yet resurrect him a fourth time. That's still a possibility. Uh, this guy appears as a giant pig god thing. He still manifests in human form as a Ganon, while still physically in the Dark World. Uh, he wields a trident pretty consistently. His intelligence varies massively across resurrections, dumb beast in oracle games, but deceives and manipulates Yuga and Link Between Worlds, which is after that. You know this guy had the Triforce of Wisdom. He's playing big brain games all the time. And he's incredibly magically powerful, even when he's this dumb beast. There's a lot of information here. The important thing about Downfall Timeline, he wins in Ocarina of Time. Ganondorf becomes this unstoppable force that slowly erodes so much of the kingdom of Hyrule until they've forgotten a lot of their history. Uh, Hyrule Historia calls out even that like the map in the original two games is such a smaller piece of land. Ganon wins and slowly erodes everything you know and love. Until, eventually, he's killed. I kept accidentally moving this Ganon, so he just wiggles. Look at him. Look at him. He wiggles. Anyways, I haven't actually played any of these games. Take this all with a grain of salt. Switching timelines here to this guy, everyone's favorite adult man with a feud with literal 12-year-olds. Love this guy. I love Wind Waker Ganondorf so much. Something important to recognize about this, and I don't have um, Game of Thronesy regal titles for him, because they'd all just they would like there's repeated titles for a lot of these guys. This would literally just be me copy pasting the Ocarina of Time Ganondorf's titles and then adding like Lord of the Forsaken Fortress or something, which he's never called in game. The only titles that are ever given to this guy in Wind Waker are titles that are also given to Ocarina Ganondorf. He somehow, we'll talk about it, somehow breaks the seal on the Sacred Realm only for the world to flood. He hides in the Forsaken Fortress, slowly be rebuilding resources. Uh, one of his big, big feats for this Ganondorf um, is he, like, depowers the Master Sword, um, which... Of course, Tears Ganondorf depowered, like curses every weapon in the world. So that kind of blows this out of the water. But uh, he wields twin swords. Um, this game is the first game to feature, like, on the swords, it says Kaume and Kotake, the names of Twin Rova. That is also true on. Um, the sword that you can get from Phantom Ganon in Tears uh, has Kaume Kotake on it. Kind of implies, the fact that that's been repeated a couple times implies to me that they are like blacksmiths as well as uh, witches, which is cool. He seems nerfed in magical ability. Um, he does create a Phantom Ganon, but the Phantom Ganon is very like shadowy compared to other ones. This guy never takes boar form. He doesn't do Dead Man's Folly. He gathers Tetra and the Hero of Winds in order to reform the Triforce and restore the land of Hyrule for himself. But his wish is stolen by King Daphne's, and he is slain for good. I love him so much. Wind, Wa Wind Waker's my favorite game, um, and this incarnation of him has really solidified him as my favorite fucking villain in fiction. Uh, love him to death. Anyways... Let's talk about the actual, <laughs> my actual favorite villain in all of fiction, the fucking goat, the demon train, choo choo. Hyrule Historia specifically calls out, the demon train looks like Ganondorf. 
Why does the demon train look like Ganondorf? I'll tell you why. Where Ganondorf is dead, Hyrule's destroyed. But the there is still someone with the spirit of the hero. There is still surviving members of Hylia's bloodline. So the curse does still persist. The curse persists even beyond Ganon's death. This is this is timeline theory, timeline theory stuff. I personally interpret it that Ganondorf the first, Tears Ganondorf, is just dead in adult timeline. I know I know that eventuality theorists don't like that. I think Ganondorf the first just dies when the flood happens. There's no reason that the water wouldn't go down into the depths. It's not you can't have an underground chasm that's so well sealed that water doesn't go down in there. He's fucking drowned. That chamber's fucking destroyed and under leagues of water. You got two water, uh, two Ganons buried at sea. But the curse of demise persists, and it persists as this ugly choo-choo motherfucker. <laughs> A lot of that is my theory. It's never explained in canon. It could be. Before Tears came out, I will say it did make sense. Eventuality theory did make sense for Breath of the Wild on this timeline. Because I can see that like the raw power of the curse manifesting as the demon train being used by Maladus for a little bit. And then later manifesting as the Calamity Ganon. Especially considering Calamity Ganon also incorporates tech into itself the same way the demon train does. That makes a lot of sense. But we don't get any implication in Spirit Tracks that the demon train comes from up underneath Hyrule Castle, and that wouldn't make sense anyway because that Hyrule Castle isn't built because Rauru sealed a Ganondorf underneath it. It's built because Tetra wanted to rebuild a Hyrule Castle. Too, too many things just don't make sense for Tears of the Kingdom in Spirit Tracks. I said I wasn't going to get into the timeline weeds. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're switching timelines again. Let's read these titles. Ganondorf Dragmire the Second, Dark Lord, Demon Thief, The Banished Demon King, Bearer of the Triforce of Power, Dark Beast, Twilight God. Um, the Ancient Sages, after a tip from a magic time travel boy, uh, they exile him to the Twilight Realm rather than allow his betrayal of Hyrule. He possesses the Triforce of Power via Divine Prank. Let's get into the Divine Prank. Let's get into the Divine Prank. Let's talk about it real quick. A lot of people take it very literally that the gods give him the Triforce for some reason. I don't think that's what happens. I think it is literally Link, as an adult, already possessing the Triforce of Courage, comes back in time and brings his shard of the Triforce with him. But there can't be two Triforces. In the adult timeline, it breaks so that Link has... Wind Waker Link has to go looking for it. In the child timeline, the guy that becomes the hero's shade, the guy that's going through Majora's Mask, he just has the Triforce of Courage. And whenever he does that, he brings that back. The Triforce of Power goes to Ganondorf. The Triforce of Wisdom goes to Zelda. Neither of them knows why it happens. Zelda timeline is absolutely fucked. Zelda timeline makes sense. I'll make a video about it at some point. The important thing is, is that time travel shenanigans happen. People in the child timeline, in Twilight Princess, don't know that time travel happens. So that's why none of this stuff is explained in game. Because not a single NPC, even the Hero's Shade, doesn't know that that's what happened. They just know, somehow... The Triforce got split, even though no one actually went to go steal it. They stopped that from happening. But somebody split the Triforce, and I think that somebody is just the Hero of Time to split it. And just like Ganondorf splitting it in the regular adult timeline, Ganondorf splitting it gives Zelda and Link their Triforces, the Hero of Time splitting it gives the bad guy his Triforce too. That's my theory. That's theory very magic and powerful he see he this is the only ganondorf we see like going back and forth between this like beast form also usually it's not really a beast form it's just like a big pig man 
Uh, except for Breath of the Wild, he has dark beast form as well. But this guy transforms back and forth between them at will, which is unique to him, I believe. Claims to have ascended to the status of god within the Twilight Realm. Uh, eventually betrayed by Zant. That's what happens in the last cutscene. A lot of people think that's unclear. I think it's very obvious. Zant stops... Zant cuts off whatever spiritual connection of sharing power that they had. And Link is able to kill him with the Master Sword. Uh, his dying words, as like Zant is betraying him, are very similar to like Z Demise's speech at the end of Skyward Sword. Ganondorf has this whole speech about, like, this isn't over, the history of light and shadow shall be written in blood. And then Xanta's like, fuck you, and then he dies. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'm specifically calling this out, because this is the only Ganondorf that we see get reborn a third time. But a lot of people hate on this guy, and hate on Four Swords Adventures' placement in the lore. I think it makes perfect sense, except for one thing, which we'll get into. He does a curse, very similar to Demise. He says, there's going to be more of this. Your bloodline will not hear the end of this. Uh, Ganondorf III, Demon King, Gerudo Exile. I think I made that up, but he is an exile of the Gerudo. That is canon. Uh, King of Darkness, bearer of the Triforce of Power, source of all monsters. Is he the source of all monsters? He's the third Ganondorf. Of course he's not the source of all monsters, but they call him that, and it's fucking cool, so we put it there. That is from the games, that this incarnation is called that. Don't be fooled by the fact that he looks like Big Pigman. This guy is born a Gerudo again, but he's not the king of the Gerudo, which is interesting. I, I love Gerudo lore from uh, Four Swords Adventures, Forza's Adventures has good lore, and I hate that so many theorists like to just pretend it's, it's not real. Uh, he's driven by a lust for power. He also seems to possess knowledge and admiration of past and potentially even alternate timeline versions of Ganon. And I say this because he has... He has downfall timeline Ganon's trident. Why do the Gerudo have downfall timeline Ganon's trident in the child timeline. Like, the trident has to come from somewhere, but like, this Ganon, it's the first thing he does, is to go get a trident that Ganondorf in his knowledge of history never had. Why is that the first thing he does? It's weird. Um, he's also, Kami and Kotake don't exists don't seem to exist in this timeline like he's not raised to be a king of evil like ganondorf 2 is he just decides on his own i'm gonna be a fucking king of evil gets the tr uh the trident gets the mirror uh tricks the heroes of light into freeing body sorry he doesn't free body he tricks you into doing that uh and then eventually he's sealed by the four sword now i'm not clicking next on the thing because I'm about to do something. I'm about to slide. I've talked about some theory stuff in here. What I'm about to do is just wholesale try to sell you on something that I'm pretty sure officially a lot a lot of Zelda theorists don't consider any of what I'm about to say canon. But we're going to talk about it. Hyrule Warriors Ganondorf is canon and you can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> I understand this is my theory, but I believe it. I believe it in my core. He's sealed into the Four Sword, Hyrule Warriors. His soul is split into four pieces. It's the only. There's only one time a Ganon is killed with the Four Sword. Usually, that's in Vadi's games, and there's only one time where Ganondorf is sealed in four different places. His soul has been split into four things. That's too much of a coincidence. His soul is split into four pieces, and at some point in between these two games, the four bits of his soul are moved from the Four Sword into the Gate of Time. In this era, who wields twin blades and usurps combine military forces of several previous Ganons from different eras. 
Um, worth pointing out, I don't believe these twin blades say Kaume Kotake on them. I believe these twin blades say the names of the blacksmiths from Majora's Mask, which is another child timeline reference. He's eventually defeated and killed with the Master Sword. Worth noting, no matter how you try to place, and most people don't consider Hyrule Warriors canon, so most Zelda theorists don't talk about this, no matter how you place this guy in the timeline, he has knowledge he shouldn't have, just like Four Swords Adventures does. So it just furthers my theory. <laughs> it might just be a thing because he's sealed in the Gate of Time. That might be what the writers were going for. I don't know. But I'm going to say that these are the same two guys, and that the curse had been so manipulated and warped at this point that, like, the colors are bleeding over. Um, and this is a recurring thing, no matter how you look at it, this is a recurring thing in, um, in the Child Timeline, because this guy kinda has this problem too, because that's what the Divine Prank is. He gets the Triforce of Power because Ganon is supposed to have the Triforce of Power in the other timelines. The lines blur and the colors run into each other in the child timeline. The three timelines can be simplified thus. The adult timeline, I, I said I wasn't going to get too into timelines, but it's interesting. The adult timeline, Ganondorf loses, but Hyrule is destroyed. And the children of Hylia move on to greener pastures. That doesn't mean that there's no conflict, but they move on. History progresses. Technology progresses. Downfall timeline. Ganon wins. Not forever, not for long, but Hyrule suffers heavy costs. Their history, their legacy is diminished over thousands of years. The child timeline. The colors all run into each other. The cycles repeat and just pick up steam and keep rolling. Especially if Hyrule Warriors is canon, and especially if Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are child timeline. Every history keeps coming back. The mistakes of the past cannot be left alone, because both the good guys and the bad guys can't leave well enough alone. Let's, let's rip the band-aid off. Calamity Ganon ripped the band-aid off. How far? 50 minutes into the stream. What, what the fuck is Calamity Ganon? What is he? What is it? This is canon. Everything on this part of the slide, canon. Paraphrased quotes from Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, sorry. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, and Skyward Sword. Malice is a thing in Skyward Sword. So the fact that Calamity Ganon is formed of the same sub substance as the monsters in Skyward Sword very strongly implies that this is the raw form of Demise's curse. Um, like, not constrained by a mortal Gerudo body, this is the raw power of the Demise curse, just unleashed on Hyrule. He's said to have cyclically fought against Hyrule repeatedly over thousands of years, so many times that, quote, the history of Hyrule is also the history of Calamity Ganon. I... That quote is so important to the lore, and I think a lot of people overlook it. This is not a version of Ganon that happened 10,000 years ago and then came back. This is a cyclical thing throughout their history. Ganon is a thing over and over throughout history. That strongly implies that the legends of Ganondorf plaguing Hyrule over the years, um, those other legends of Zelda, a lot of them have happened in this version of Hyrule. And there's other reasons to believe that as well. We're not talking about the whole timeline here. We're just talking about Ganon. I know I've broken that rule so many times. We're just talking about Ganon, I promise. In Tears, he's said to be a byproduct of Ganondorf the first. Tears Ganondorf. This malice seeps out of him. And every hundred or a few thousand years, it's powerful enough to burst out as Calamity Ganon. Ganondorf himself is sealed. Ganon can still plague the kingdom. So, question, inquiry, which is it? Is this just the raw power of Demise? Is it 
the raw power of Ganondorf the first leaking past the seal or is this a denigrated version of OG Ganon one of the versions of Ganondorf the second or maybe even a degenerated version of Ganondorf the third which, which one of those is it which version of Ganon is this yes Calamity Ganon or Malice is is every Ganon. Um, the raw power of Demise's curse after thousands of years. He is, I think this is every Ganon. Every Ganon is the Malice. The Malice is what makes Ganondorf not just another Gerudo guy. After thousands of years of this cyclical eternal fight without a proper Gerudo king or even a pigman body, this is just the raw hatred of all the demon kings that we've talked about, built up, congealed, and unleashed upon the world. How many Ganons are there? Ten? Is the answer ten? That's not the answer. The answer is one. Jesus Christ. You good, Google Chrome? Google Sheets? You good? It loaded them all. I'm being dramatic. One. It's all one guy. It's all one. It's the same. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. We got Demise. Ganon is born from Demise's curse. Originally, as Ganondorf the uh, first. The curse, too powerful to be sealed by Raru's seal, uh, escapes as Malice. My audio is peaking there. I don't know why. I wasn't shouting. We know that Malice is escaping Ganondorf one's body as he deteriorates. The raw power of Demise's curse is leaving him because that is too powerful to be uh, contained by Ra. Um, and we know that followers of Ganondorf the first are still around in his time period and are called his mothers. Um, I think that they use magic to imbue their son, whether that's whether they're literally like recreating Ganondorf from this malice that is seeped out of his body or whether they literally have a son and imbue him with that power I think that's what's happening I think that that's a theory that's a game theory but I think that they call out that Kaomei and Kotake exist in both these time periods for a reason um, to explain that these are still one guy and then of course the hero of time comes along and makes this way more complicated for us. In one timeline, Ganondorf is victorious, repeatedly... He's eventually sealed away, but he's repeatedly resurrected in his perfected pig god body until the kingdom of Hyrule shrinks and erodes into a shadow of itself. Uh, in one timeline, he fails, is killed, and the curse deteriorates into a force other villains, specifically Maladus, uses for their own schemes. And that's what the demon train is. And that's what happens in the adult timeline. Moving on. In one timeline, he becomes a god and makes a curse of his own, reincarnates into Ganondorf III, is born from this combined chain of curses and malice, fueled by a hunger for the power of his predecessors. The Calamity is what remains once there are no more Gerudo Kings or Pig God bodies. I think a lot of people have it backwards that there haven't there hasn't been a male born to the Gerudo in 10,000 years. That's not because Ganon was sealed away and stopped reincarnating as Ganondorf. I think Calamity Ganon stopped having a host a, ga a Gerudo body to put its will into. Um, and that's why it deteriorates into this formless thing. That's my theory. My game theory. I already made that joke. He doesn't have a body to act as host for the raw malice. Still pouring out of subterranean Ganondorf 1 up here. Here he is. And there's one more guy on here. We don't, we don't need to talk about Cadence Ganon. We don't need to connect him as all one guy like we do it for everything else because he's probably not canon anyways so we don't gotta worry about it the end subscribe <laughs> how many ganons are there there's one ganon is the curse he is the raw malice um that 
gives all of these guys their power and their drive to continue consuming and gaining power and accumulating it all for themselves. Ganon is that force and that connects all of them. But because that connective tissue does seem to exist through all of them, I think it is fair to say that there it's all one Ganon. I haven't streamed in um in a hot minute. Um this is my first stream in almost 3 weeks after after my last stream I announced that I was going to be trying to stream multiple times a week. Part of that has been health issues. Uh, I would really like it would be really helpful if I actually hit girl week goal this month. Anyways, call to action, please give money.